Hello, my legion. This is uh, a video called uh, A Gauntlet of 70s Grindhouse. Finally, I get the reviews. Uh, for one friend of mine from work, let me borrow this cool uh, double set DVD called Horrible Horrors Collection, Volume 1. And right now, I'm going to do the four movies from the 70s, and I'm going to do the four movies from the 80s in another video. And then after this, uh, what I decided to do was, from the four movies of the 70s, the one I think to be the best winner, I'm going to show a scene from it after uh, the, my reviews are over with. I already know the, the winner, but I'll let you know. And then I got a little thing of a movie collectible I forgot all about uh, from Movie Maniacs. And back when they used to have a cool place named Media Play, a long time ago in Erie, and they shut it down. Unfortunately, it closed down. It basically was a place that sold books, music, uh, movies, and uh, well, it sold something. Uh, movies and uh, something. I didn't like music supplies and stuff like that. And it was a really awesome place. I used to get all my videotapes and DVDs there and stuff like that. And of course, they shut down. They said the ID didn't work, but I love the place. And my friend got this right when they were shutting down. I got one like. Uh, from uh, Nuclear Blast, like uh, what, Monster of the Rock Volume 2. It's like a collection of awesome uh, videotapes and stuff like that. That's what I got. But he got a couple. He, he said he had Volume 1 and Volume 2. Well, anyways, uh, the synopsis of these movies are, you see, what it says, eight of the weirdest, most horrible horror films from the 70s and 80s. I'll be the judge of that. But it says, the first movie on here, and these are the, the descriptions of the movie. Or high. When a student science experiment goes horribly wrong, transforming his pet, Mr. Mumps, into a monster. He decides to use the formula to transform himself and seek revenge on his classmates. The second one is Point of Terror. Nightclub singer Tony dreams of committing acts of adultery and murder. Is he only dreaming? The third one is called Satan's Slave. This one is Catherine learns her satanic uncle is bent on reincarnating the spirit of a witch into a living being. Will she be his next victim? The last one is Terror. It's called Terror. A haunted house terrorizes and kills its film crew inhabitants through gruesome means. Well, let's go on with the first review. It's called Horror High. It's also known by another title. It's also called Twisted Brain, but I'm going to refer to it for, as Horror High. Basically, this is like a one kid is picked on really bad, and he has like a pet hamster. They, uh, well, not pet hamster, a science project hamster. He works called Mr. Mumps. And basically, he's feeding the, this formula, and he turns into a monster and kills this dude's cat. And the dude ends up killing the hamster, and he forces him to drink this potion. And uh, the potion transforms him into another being. Basically, it's a classic tale of Jacqueline Hyde and uh, he goes on a rampage and killing all his students and stuff like that. Now usually with these grindhouse movies, usually they have like one star in the movie. I didn't know anyone in this movie. My dad did. And he, uh, I did watch with my dad. Well, partially with my dad. But he, he, he thought it was really stupid. And uh, he said there's like three or four, uh, three uh, football players from the Dallas Cowboys back in the 70s. This was made in 73. So it was made a long time ago. He said had three football players from the Dallas Cowboys in it. So I guess that was their claim. Maybe they thought they'd get famous for making this movie yet. I don't think it worked out. But, oh well. Basically, this is a real low budget movie, but it's very entertaining. I really liked it. It's cheesy. It's a lot of fun. In a grindhouse sort of way, you know. So I give this a high, well, I give this high march. Okay, the second movie is pretty good. It's called Point of Terror. Now, it opens up with a really cheesy dance and song number, which I laughed during. But aside from that, this guy's a lounge singer, and then he wants to get famous. And then the claim of fame in this one, there's two actors. One's Peter Carpenter, my dad said he saw before. I'd never seen him before. And then the other one's Diane Thorne, who uh, was really popular for uh, Ilsa She-Wolf of SS. And then the other Ilsa movie, well, Wanda the Wicked Warden, the Jeff Franco one. And then uh, Ilsa, she will, Ilsa in the harem of the oil sheiks, and Ilsa, uh, what was it, Ilsa Tigress of Siberia. Well, that, that's a hard one to find, but that's really good too. 
and it's really weird uh, seeing her outside of a military uniform or something like that. But she's in regular dress, and she plays uh, a wife of this record producer, and the record producer's in a wheelchair. It turns out she killed his wife, and they're together, and then uh, she hooks up with uh, that lounge singer, and the lounge singer said, well, he'll seduce her into making an album, stuff like that. And it goes back and forth with lots of fighting and uh, scenes of adultery and uh, attempted murder. So like, this basically looks like a TV movie the week, except for the nudity. There's nudity. You know, if there wasn't any nudity, it'd be a TV movie the week. And it's really good and really entertaining until like the last seven minutes where all of a sudden something happens real quick. It seems like they cut out ten minutes of the movie. Somehow real quick, real important to happen real quick toward the end. And then, like, after that, real quick, they have, like, he see him in a dream, and it's like the movie's one big dream or something like that, which is a big cop out. And it really hurts the movie. They should at least add another five, ten minutes to at least take from point A to point B. But all of a sudden, you see his old girlfriend shoot the guy. And him dying, and all of a sudden, he wakes up. And then the beginning of the movie starts. Or when that the one girl meets him at the beginning of the movie on the beach, says, hey, what's your name, or something like that. And then he finds that it's a dream within a dream type thing. Damn, it's a real letdown, because aside from that, it's nothing spectacular, and I don't really consider it a horror film, but it's very entertaining until up to that point where they dropped the ball on that. Now, the next movie is Satan's Slave, uh, and this one has Michael Gold, you know, a famous actor, and then basically this one girl goes to her creepy uncle, and she's with her mom and dad, and all of a sudden her dad's like, oh man, he's driving the car, and oh man, he crashes the car. And then she runs, and then the daughter runs out of the car, and all of a sudden it caught on fire, and her mom and dad are dead. And apparently she passes out, and she go, and she right where her uncle, her uncle's family is kind of nuts. And uh, basically with her crazy son, and then I don't know if it's one girl that came in the house, it's not a daughter or something like that. And she lives there, and she lives in love with the son. And uh, basically uh, they're saying worship first, but they show that flashback kind of. And uh, basically, his daughter died a long time ago, and she was a witch, right? And whatever, whenever she died on her 20th birthday, and then on her 21st, but the witch is 20th, dude, okay? Uh, she died on her 20th birthday, and then whenever, apparently, the guy's daughter, the other person's daughter, her 20th birthday was coming up, and then it turned out on her 20th birthday, they were going to sacrifice her. So the other daughter could live. The problem with the movie is just so underwhelming. I fell asleep during it. And that's no good mark for any movie, you know. And it's just not, it just played so down key. It's not, it's interesting. It could have been, however, the gore effects are very well done. They're very good. So, um, you have marginal marks for that. It just wasn't. It just was so low key. They just would have sassed up a little bit, you know, it would have been a lot better. And the same thing goes for the next movie called Terror. Now, first of all, I thought this was a retitled movie because they retitled that uh, before high and called it Twisted Brain. But basically it's about a film crew in a haunted house. I thought maybe this was a retitled version of uh, House of Seven Corpses where John Carrington made it back in the seventies, but it wasn't. It's a brand movie. And Call of Terror, which surprised me because most people know there's a terror, there's a movie called The Terror that was made from Roger Corman uh, with Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson. And basically that was made uh, back to back with The House of uh, Fall of the House of Usher, which is really good. And I mean, The Terror is good, but it's not as good as Fall of the House of Usher, you know. And basically he did that in like two or three days before that, as a, as a, uh, the sets were being torn down around them they did that, just to save money. It's not a bad movie. But anyway, the terror, this one is about uh, a witch that's killed, and then she swears to kill all the loved ones. Anyone who has any affairs in this house, or any loved or connected people to the this one bloodline. And basically, you find they show like a clip of that for like 10 minutes and all of a sudden it's like the movie ends and then you see the lights come up and it's in the haunted house there's a screen inside the haunted house and basically after that you know after they leave the haunted house it's not that good 
and they really screw up the effects. The burn effects of the can are horrible. And uh, the gore effects are bad, except for uh, there's a great scene where the guy's in a guy gets killed and he's in a garbage truck he's dismembered. That's 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 all right, that's good. And then there's a scene uh, at the end where this girl gets killed, a flying scene with a sword thrower. And it's sort of theme throughout the movie. That's okay, but if there's no real after they leave the house, there's no really uh, interesting basis for the movie, you know. There's a scene in a these, apparently these girls were in an S and M club and there's a scene where this girl is like Butch Henning Lennox, blonde haircut, uh, does a weird dance with a whip and stuff like that. That's that was okay. I didn't mind that. I mean, but they showed like little bits and pieces of it. And there's a scene where the the, the movie producer or the movie guys has a little naked little movie studio. And there's a scene at the end where the one producer gets attacked by uh, by the studio itself, like some sort of supernatural stuff. And he gets wrapped up in the film and stuff like that. And the whole studio falls apart. And the stuff's pretty cool. They made a giant mistake in it. There's a bathtub in the movie. And there's like three walls. And all of a sudden the walls come down, and then they have an overhead shot, and you see a guy right in the bathtub. He must have pulled the lever to pull the wall. And he's hiding in the bathtub like that, but you see him playing this day. That's a giant mistake. Uh, but basically, it doesn't have the panads. It doesn't have anything to drive the movie to make it really good. So that's only a so-so one. So the winner of this collection of four movies is Horror High. And... Coming up is a scene from the movie Horror High. I hope you all like it. So until next time, try to enjoy the daylight. Take care, my legion. Hey, my legion. Yeah, I screwed up. I went on talking so long, I'll have to make this a two-parter. So uh, this is the end of part one of uh, Gauntlet of 70's uh, Grindcore. I mean, Grindhouse. He wants a grind core. Grind core is a type of really awesome metal. And so part two will be the scene from the movie, Horror High, that one. And also my little bit of movie memorabilia. That's from part two, okay? Take care, my legion. I just talk too damn much. That's the thing. But hey, it's two more videos for you guys to watch. Hope you like it. Take care, my legion.